Hello everyone, my name is the Radman and we are here for some Factorio. More specifically modded Factorio. Now we're getting straight to the point. Researching um I cannot read that. Uh but anyway, so we're researching some stuff and uh I decide that we need to uh ramp up the copper mining because while we are not using a lot right now, we will be using a lot eventually. So I add three more mining drills. And uh, then we that research gets done, so we research uh, some chests. And um, I uh, decide that I better get some ammo. And uh, I decide that we need more steam engines because I notice that the power is starting to go down. And then I double check that and it's all fine. So now I decide that we need to start making green science pretty soon because, you know, we need green science to advance in the game. Uh, but for now, um, I just decide to have the, uh, the stone brick maker out loading its stone bricks so that we can have them for later because we're going to need a lot of walls unless we can do a plan of mine. And uh, now I'm actually adding in the stuff for green science. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of an issue uh, getting stuff to go through nicely. In the end, I end up using one of the modded underground belts that's like uh, 30 blocks long, I believe. And uh, in preparation for making green science, I start designing the, uh, the areas that'll take off uh, the materials off the line. And uh, I also start, uh, you know, there we go. That's the green science line, and there's the, the line of green science assemblers. Now, this is going to be very temporary, because once we get trains, we're going to be uh, taking out most of this main base, because, uh, as I've said before, the point of this series is not to have a central base. It's to have a whole bunch of bases making, like, individual items except I have been thinking about it and we may not have every single base doing that but uh, you know we'll decide that time when it comes I don't know how much space each station will take up or anything and uh, here I am trying to decide uh, you know how to distribute the materials because one thing that I like to do is whenever I have a new playthrough I like to challenge myself by not using designs that I've used before, which can either be really good or really bad. So, as you can see, that's a really efficient way to make circuits, but it's not very scalable. But in this particular scenario, we don't really need scalable. And don't ask me why I put a splitter right next to a uh, assembler. I realize now that it was kind of a silly idea, but... Basically, now what I'm doing is I'm having two copper and one iron go into that circuit maker. Now, I just realized that I left nowhere for iron, so I decided to add that last minute, of course, because, like I said, sometimes I do get into a little bit of trouble doing this, like, last minute. And uh, one thing that you'll notice if you watch the belts as I'm working is that they're actually having a hard time staying supplied. Now this is something that I'm going to address in, uh, in the next episode probably because I'm pretty sure that one of the mods actually changed the rate at which furnaces can smelt that or it changed mining drill speeds. Whichever it is, I'll need to fix uh, and tweak stuff according to that because uh, later on, not so much right now, but later after we actually get green science up and running I begin to notice that it's actually a lot harder to, you know, do anything with. And I make a mistake here. I forget that you need actual inserters for green science, but you have to use electronic circuits to make inserters. So that's what they were being made for. But I get it mixed up in my head because I was more worried about a biter base that I had been noticing on the edge of pollution. And uh, there I remove the ammo you know, stuff, because uh, we don't need it making that standard ammo anymore, because I want to get uh, Military 2 researched, which will give us the ability to use better ammo that does a lot more damage. And uh, basically, we, do, we go and try and take this out using the turret creep method, which is the most reliable method, except uh, you probably uh, shouldn't attempt this with just standard ammo because um, 
as you can see, it goes very badly. Now, I will tell you that I do actually die in a little bit, because uh, I got too bold. In fact, right there, I wasn't quite watching my health enough. It's amazing I didn't die then. But yeah, I do actually die. But um, to keep things interesting, I just uh, reloaded an old save that was like 20 seconds before. And now briefly, I actually think about setting up a farm for these guys. Because you see, uh, those little uh, pellet things that they drop can actually be used to craft alien artifacts. So I briefly think about just making a farm for them. But then I realize that as the biter attacks get worse, that outpost is just going to be taking a beating and I don't have any way of keeping the guns supplied. And uh, they burn through a lot of ammo because I think just in the time it takes me to take out those four bases, I think that they're almost empty. That or they were, you know, pretty close to it. But it's kind of hard to tell since I ended up taking the ammo out of them to put in different guns. And yeah, just in case you were wondering, the most efficient way to kill a biter base is with a turret. If you, especially if you're using standard ammo. So please, don't try shooting the base to death yourself with a pistol and standard ammo. Use a turret. That's something that I should have learned. And uh, also, I did leave a base behind back there, and this is when I died. But um, the reason I left that base behind, by the way, is because... There was just too many spawners too close together. And uh, here I I used the turret creep method a little more. This one doesn't go as well, but I think I eventually kill it. Yeah, see? I think that might... I can't remember whether or not it usually does the thing where it lights up around you when you're shooting. But we got that done, so now we're going to explore a little more so that we can know uh, where the biter bases are and uh, let's see what happens next oh so I decide that it's time to go back and actually check on the uh, production area since I'm a little worried about leaving it all alone because I don't at this time have very many turrets set up and now I actually move the stone smelting over enough so that I can actually get iron to the gear to the circuit assembler and this is when I realized my blunder I realized that I have inadvertently absolutely screwed everything up and uh, as you can see I'm kind of adjusting the belts for that and I actually start making gears because uh, inserters also take gears so what I end up doing is I end up using a modded a special modded inserter that puts stuff on the near side of the belt and I end up using that and a regular inserter to, you know, mix things properly. And then I only manage to get a single uh, assembler working. But we'll probably try and fix that next episode. Because I, re I, I realized post-episode, of course, that, that that is a extremely inefficient system. And there are a few tweaks that I could do to it to make it work better. And, yeah. Let's see, okay, so, now what I do is, I kind of just spend a little bit of time running around trying to decide what to do, because uh, the problem is, it seems like these episodes are actually a lot uh, longer than they actually are when recording them, which kind of makes me think, you know, I shouldn't do a big project, and I'm like, oh wait, I have time for that. So yeah, and now I actually get the inserters working, so we can, you know, get some green science going. And, uh, of course, the amount of assemblers that I have for inserters compared to green science won't work in the long run. But, like I said, most of this is temporary. In fact, um, I believe that either we have rail research by the end of this episode or we're getting darn close to it. But anyway, I should I should stop talking about stuff that's, you know, so far off. But then I start putting lamps around the place, uh, you know, to make it so that you guys can see. And also because I, I prefer to have lamps in the areas, you know, that I care about and I inhabit. Because um, there's just something that I like just a little bit know, more about knowing that I'm not going to accidentally walk into a biter in my own base that I can't see. Which, you know, it's a little bit of an irrational fear, but so what? 
And uh, another mistake that I inadvertently made is I didn't have any steel production. Which I'm going to realize in a little bit after beefing up this turret line because it's actually been getting attacked. I don't know if you saw it there, but there are some few. There are quite a few dead bo bodies actually, and uh, I decide that that's not something that I want to mess around with. So I, you know, I decide to dispatch them, and uh, I believe in just a few seconds. Oh yeah, so I believe that it's actually while I'm building this uh, uh, steel setup that we actually get another attack. Now, I don't think I notice it, but I do notice the aftermath, because it leaves behind quite a few bodies, and uh, definitely next episode, we're probably going to want to look about getting some better uh, weapons and ammunition set up, since I took down the temporary ammo maker, which, in hindsight, wasn't a good idea, because uh, I didn't have any way of making new ammo, but, you know, there's just some things that you do at one time that you... Uh, think what in the world was I thinking like this chest thing it would have been so much easier to just run those out on a conveyor belt and yeah basically now I have four dedicated steel furnaces uh, they do have to be manually resupplied with coal but eventually that'll be done because uh, like I said I eventually want to have one train station for every item and I'm not sure how close together they'll be I mean the map is pretty expansive but uh, thanks to the landfill mod, we can, you know, we can adjust the land as we need to. And uh, unfortunately, I decide to come down here and check out a biter base in the middle of the night, and I actually get a turret down and start thinking about turret creeping. But I realize I didn't bring near enough ammo, which, uh, you know, kind of inspires me. Maybe I should start making that, uh, you know, good armor piercing ammo. And I believe in just a second. Uh, I'll be either crafting it in my inventory, yeah, n so now I'm crafting some in my inventory, but of course, just running off your inventory alone isn't enough to keep guns or anything supplied, and, uh, I will tell you guys right now that I like to have a base that is very, very self-sufficient, like, one part feeds another and that feeds into everything else and everything else works out very nicely, um, I might give you guys, uh, one example is the turret system in my old base, the one that I did before this world. It had a system where all the turrets were in a line, but they were all fed from the same conveyor belt. And, uh, here I take out a rock using out, using up some of that silly, I think I made a mistake and accidentally used some of my, you know, armor piercing ammo but I intended to use standard ammo and then uh, I start looking for little parts where the biters could get through if they really tried because uh, my main fear is that while I'm out tackling a base they will come in and absolutely decimate that base because uh, I usually like it's a bad habit but I usually don't actually carry enough material on me that I could from scratch completely fix everything like it would take a while like I know some people who they keep like uh, you know they know exactly how many stacks of stuff they'll need and here I just set up a very primitive ammo maker which is in no way automatic and basically all I do is I put in like a stack of copper or something and then either steel or copper is a limiting factor and that determines how much ammo it makes but it beats handcrafting it and uh... as you can see i was actually thinking about starting some um... research using my research queue mod but the only problem with that mod is that it doesn't equate for how much actual you know research it takes to do it and it and it also automatically does everything sequentially before what you want to research which can sometimes ca cause a problem and I do decide to finally uh, you know get gates because uh, once once uh, we get uh, probably blue science production going um, I either want to be fully you know have all the basic components being made at other stations or we need to have uh, this base be highly militarized uh, and um, yeah but basically another thing I wanted to tell you is 
when, uh, for if we do have to end up having a highly militarized base just to keep the biters out, for, you know, for like the first few more episodes, then what I will do as a trade-off is I will not end this series as, you know, unless I have like a technical difficulty that loses the world or something. I will avoid ending this series early, like, I'll keep going after I get like rocket defense and launch my space stuff, which is actually good because I have mods that add in endgame content that make it a lot longer to play. And, uh, yeah. But anyway, what I would do in that case is, and this is going to sound really silly, is I'm, I want to make a, f uh, a train network that can supply every item to a central location, but every item has its own station that's made at. And to make it even more interesting, I'm actually thinking about doing it for modded items too. But that's a that's a very shaky ground right now because there are a few items that I've had a few problems with, like with um, logistics systems. Like I recently added a mod that I wanted for early game, and it made it so that my end game logistics network couldn't recognize half the items. But anyway, that's going to be all for now. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Radman. Goodbye.